In this video, I'm going to try to explain as simply as possible how to design your sound system for a gig using a free software called Ease Focus 3. And the reason I'm making this video is because previously I thought that it was something only the experts know how to do and it's too daunting to get into. I even had the software on my computer for the past two years or more and haven't touched it because, well, you know, when the time comes, I'll learn that software. And a couple of months ago, that time came, I had to hang line arrays and I didn't use line arrays before. Either the system existed in the place I was working in or I'm just using point source speakers. But for this gig, there wasn't someone for the system. I had to do everything system design and front of house and monitors. And if you know anything about line arrays, they are heavy, really heavy. And there's no way I was just gonna guess how to put the speakers because with point source speakers, you can move the speaker around, try to see where it's hitting. With a line array, you cannot do that. If you hang it, and there are many speakers attached to one another, bend the array, you change the angles between the speakers, it will tilt up. So you have to change the pin from the fly bar. I needed to know exactly where each speaker is pointing before even hanging the array. So I needed to learn how to use that software for that gig. And it took me about one or two weeks to really get comfortable with it. And then I designed the system and it was exactly as I predicted in the software. So this video will not include every single feature that exists in the software. I just want to show you the important things that will allow allow you to get started and design your system. Let's go to Google and type in Ease Focus 3. Click on the first link, go down. This is it, free download, download the software. And while this is downloading, there's something called a system definition file. It's a file with an extension .gll. And that file is what tells the program all the characteristics of your speakers, the dimensions, the frequency response, all the angles, the rigging. And if I go into this, there are many files, so don't extract it directly on your desktop. Put it in a folder first. Just make a new folder and put it inside. And then inside that folder, I'll extract it. Extract here. Then I'll go into the setup.exe and it's installing. Next. Okay, finish, finish. And here's my software. Let's open it. This is how it looks the first time you open it. Now remember I said you need a file for your speakers, so let's go and download that. In that gig, I was using FBT speakers. So let's go into the website, go to products line arrays, and I'm gonna find my speaker model. It was this one. I'm gonna go down and search for that GLL file. Here it is, GLL for Ease Focus. Click on it, gonna download. Now I have the file. I'm gonna go to the program and hit file and import system definition file. And I'm gonna find my FBT speakers GLL file and open it. Now Ease Focus 3 knows everything about my speakers. So let's add a sound source right here. And here you can see I have FBT because I just downloaded that and imported it into the program. If I didn't do that, it wouldn't exist here. So if you're using a different brand of speakers and download the GLL file and import it, it will show up here. So I'm gonna choose FBT and double click on that. And now I can place my speaker. I'm gonna put it in the middle just for the sake of it right now. This right here is the top view. This is the side view. You can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And this is the rigging view. When you change the angle of the speakers, you will see it here. How can I change properties about the speaker? I'm gonna go down here in the bottom left corner and hit object properties. And now I can play around with my speakers. Now, if you grab in this side view right here, grab one of these lines, you can tilt the entire array if you grab the top line. And if you grab any other one, you can change the angle of the speakers or you can change the angle of the speakers from here. So this is the first speaker, second speaker, let's put that one degree, two degrees, three degrees. So you can either grab them from here or change it in here. Same thing for the position of the array. If you grab the array either in the top view or side view, you can move it around or you can go to this position and orientation and type in the values. So if I type in right here, zero on the X and zero on the Y, I am centered in the origin and the Z is the height of the array. So let's put it at seven meters, for example. And these are the angles. Vertical, let me grab this. So you can see it changing if I lift this or lower it, the value is changing of the vertical angle. And if I grab from the top view this line and move it, the horizontal value is changing right here. You can also resize the windows if it's too narrow for your screen, do whatever you want. And you can grab this, put it somewhere else. You can customize the app. And if you messed up your layout, you can always go here to view and reset layout. Now this doesn't only allow you to put your speakers and angle them, but you can see where they are covering. So if you click on show mapping, you will see these colors. Red means very loud, 
Blue means not so loud. And you can see the dB scale here and the colors. And if you notice, these colors are only inside that box. Why? Because this is the audience area. So if your audience isn't as simple as just a rectangle, you can add more audience area. You have different shapes like so and like so. You can put these different places and see the coverage of your speakers in these areas where people will be. So right here in the object properties, I can do width 40 meters, depth 60 meters. And let me center the position. Okay, that's the area where the people will be sitting. So I asked the guy that works there, how high can I lift the speakers? And he said about seven and a half meters. So I decided that the highest speaker will be at seven meters. So let me select the array and then put the height right here, seven meters. Now what we are seeing right here is a broadband frequency response, all the frequencies. But I'm not really concerned about that because the low frequencies are not gonna be coming from this array anyway. So I'm gonna select in the bandwidth right here, three octaves. And if you don't know, an octave is a doubling of the frequency. So if I start at 100 Hertz, the next octave will be 200, the next octave will be 400 Hertz. So now this simulation is showing me three octaves around that frequency that I choose right here. And if you noticed when I changed from broadband to three octaves, the entire simulation changed. And that's what we want to look at. Looking at the full frequency range doesn't really help you to know if the sound is intelligible or not. In other words, if someone is speaking on a microphone, can I understand what they are saying? And intelligibility is usually around 4000 Hertz. So I'm going to select 4000 Hertz with a three octave bandwidth. Now I can see that most of the area is of similar color. Only behind the speaker is blue. Blue means quiet. However, this is still not very helpful. For a good even listening experience among the people in the audience, I want the difference in level to be not more than plus or minus 3 dB. So in total, not more than 6 dB difference in level. So I'm going to go to file and options, environment, and in functionality, I'll set the mode to extended, hit OK. And now I see an extra option right here, relative. I'll check it and choose plus or minus 3 dB. So now if you look at the dB scale, it's a relative scale. If I turn it off, this is an absolute scale. This is 100 dB, 96 dB turn it on. This is a relative scale. So everything that is in the same color is within plus or minus 3 dB. So that's maximum 6 dB difference. So I know that everybody sitting in this green area is hearing roughly the same thing, but everyone sitting in here has it louder. Okay, so now let's start designing the system. I'm going to select the array, choose how many boxes I want in it. So right here in the object properties, you have rigging, box count. I'll be using four boxes because that's what we had, four boxes on each side. And if you look in here on the side view, you will see a straight line that is the ground and a dotted line that is the ear level. And the default is good enough. You can change it if you want. You can go to project properties and project settings and change the sitting ear height and the standing ear height from here. And then you can select the audience area and go to object properties and choose if they are sitting or standing. I'll not mess with that. It doesn't really matter for now. So what I want to do is point the speakers at the ears of the people. So I'm going to grab that line from the top speaker and tilt it down until it crosses the last Seat. And you can see this curve right here shows the intensity of the sound throughout that area. Even if you don't have the mapping on, the mapping will show you colors. This line will show you the same thing, but with a line instead of color. That way you can turn off the mapping and let the program run smoother. Now I have very little number of speakers and a very big area. So how do I know how much I should splay them? The splay is the angle between each speaker of the line array. Here I have something called auto splay. So let me try this. Auto splay and choose the upper box and the lower box. So you don't have to do the entire array. You can choose from which box to which box. I only have four boxes, so let's do the entire array. Start. And this is what Ease Focus thinks is the most even spread of the array. Now here's the thing. If you spread the speakers too wide, you will not get the benefit of summation between them. They will not combine together anymore. So they won't throw sound very far. You can see the green line was to the back. Now it's more forward. Whereas if I make the second speaker closer to the first speaker, 
you can see the green line went behind because they are combining together and throwing a further distance. Now only four speakers is honestly not enough for that large of an area. And what we ended up doing is we added two delay speakers in the middle of the tent to the back. So now my focus is getting these speakers to the middle. Let me put a just a microphone in the middle just to have a reference and I'll point my highest speaker at that microphone and I'll turn off the mapping just so that I can see the lines better. I'm going to make the angle of the second speaker bigger and see the line change in real time. At that angle, this is much straighter than if it's close. You can see when it's close, there's a bump right here. And if I make it wider, the bump kind of smoothens out. Now also, we are not just covering the entire area with one array. So let me put this array on this side. Let me hit Control C and Control V to copy and paste the array. Let me put the other one on that side. And so now these arrays combine together. And after playing around with the angles for a little bit, I figured out that six degrees on the second speakers and six degrees on the third and 10 degrees on the last are giving me the most even coverage. Keep in mind, you are looking at everything in front of this microphone. Everything in the back will be taken care of with delay speakers later. And you know what? Let's add the delay speakers. I'm going to add a sound source from here and just choose any two-way speaker, one right here and point it towards the inside and make it two and a half meters high because these are sitting on stands. And I'll put another one on the other side and turn it towards the inside. So here's another tip. If you want to turn off speakers, you can go to the sources and click on it turn it off and click on it again to turn it on. And so now you see when I add these delay speakers, the red area becomes much less red and more of a yellow and the green area gets bigger. So I'm getting a much more even coverage of the audience, even though the very front is still a little bit louder than the rest, but we can turn down the bottom speakers on the arrays. And that's what I ended up doing. I turned it down by like two or three dB. Okay, now I said that these are delay speakers, but how do I put the delay? I will click on the speaker and go to the filter tab. And right here you have gain and delay and I will input a delay, but I'm not seeing anything. How do I know how much delay I need? I'm gonna put another microphone in the back right here and I'm gonna go to the time response tab and choose the green microphone. And I can see that Muse 1 and Muse 2, these are the line arrays. They are arriving the latest because they are the furthest away from the microphone. And then I have two-way speaker one and two-way speaker this blue line, these are the delay speakers. So how much time difference is there between the line arrays and the delay speakers? I look in here from 0, 112 milliseconds. So let's try this, 112. Okay, that's close enough. Let's do the other speaker. Let's just run through the rest of the settings you can do with the arrays. The pinpoint right here is the number of the pin that is on the fly bar. So when I tilt the array high or low, you can look in the rigging window and the pin will change. And you can also look in the object properties and you can see A, B and numbers next to it. So when I go to fly the arrays in real life, I will know that I have to hang the fly bar from pin number A18. And right here, you can change the type of speaker if you're using a sub. You can change the gain of each speaker, the level, plus or minus certain number of dB, the angles. Then you can go to the filter settings right here. And if you're using active boxes, they probably have presets. So for the first box, it's from box one to three, and the angle is zero right here. So I'm going to keep that. Second box has an angle of six, and it's between box one and three, but the angle is between five and six. So I'm going to choose that preset. The third box is also six degrees. It's box one to three, and the angle is between five and 10. For the fourth box, it's 10 degrees. So it's box four to six and angles five to 10. So these are the presets that I'll have to select on each box. And I'm choosing them right here in the software because I will need it later. Now that I'm done with the design, I can go to file and create report and I'll include everything in it. Okay, save and I have a report. I can see the top view, side view, go down. I can see the rigging information. So that's the line array. I'm gonna have to hang the fly bar from pin number 18A. That's the pinpoint I have to use on the fly bar. And if I go down, I can see each box. 
The first box is zero degrees, second box six degrees, third box six, and fourth box 10. And then on the first box, I'll select preset A, and on the second box, preset B, third box, preset B, and fourth box, preset D. So when I went on the field, I put this file on my phone, and instead of bringing my laptop to open the design file and see what's happening, I just looked on my phone that I can put in my pocket to see the rigging information. And I flew the arrays, and everything was as expected. In the front, as it shows right here, it was a little bit louder so I turned down the bottom speakers just by a couple of dB, two or three dB, and it was even throughout. Now ideally if you have a system processor you might want to just put a high shelf and turn down the high frequencies on these speakers that are too loud because if you change the level of the actual box you will start to lose directionality with the line array. One of the features of a line array is that it makes the sound more directional. It's not like a point source. A point source spreads sound all over and I mean in the low frequencies because high frequencies are directional anyway. But in this case, it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. I was high passing at 100 hertz. I know this was a long video, but I really hope that it helped you understand this a bit more and made it a bit less scary. And once you get comfortable with this, it will give you a lot of confidence that I know what's happening and I know exactly where my speakers are pointing. Now, of course, you'll still have to listen to the system. This is not magic. It's just a tool, but it's a really helpful tool. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button. And the next step is to learn how to tune your speakers. So click on the video on the screen right now to learn how to do that. And I'll see you there.